Good morning, and welcome to Taylor Street Church Crest. Oh Lord, oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. Oh Lord, oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. We magnify your name, Prince of Peace, mighty God, O Lord God Almighty. O Lord, O Lord, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. O Lord, O Lord, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. O Lord, we pray. truly blessed this morning with the time that God has granted us to come together to praise Him and thank Him for all He's done for us. We would like to welcome everyone to our gathering this morning. We pray that it will be beneficial to your soul. This morning we are blessed to have uh, Brother Michael Joyner being with us again to bring us the, the sermon. And Michael will also have the, the class time, auditorium class time, after services are complete. May we all together start our service this morning with lifting our voice in song to God. Bless the Lord of my soul. Worship His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day coming, 
Today is a really, really good day. Amen. Amen. It's so glad to have y'all in here and have an opportunity to worship together. And it's a really special day because um, I get an opportunity to sit back and be filled up uh, by a friend of mine, by a mentor of mine, by a, a man who um, is loved by all the, the ministers in the area and has uh, served so passionately. Uh, and he has... Um, semi-retired but we won't let him retire all the way and so uh, we're just ecstatic that Michael Joyner is joining us uh, from Lubbock he brought his beautiful bride with us and she's here to worship with us and we are so glad Michael that that you're here and so I just want to turn it over to him but before we do I just want to offer a prayer a blessing upon Michael uh, and if you don't mind if you'll come up here and I'll I'll pray with you and for you and uh, then we'll uh, begin our time of, of worship or continue our time of worship. Okay. Father God, I just, I thank you so much for this servant of yours, for this child of yours. And for today, uh, he is going to be a conduit of your message. And so Lord, I just, I pray that while I know that your Holy Spirit has worked powerfully to prepare him, Lord, I just pray that uh, the words that he says are straight from you and they will touch our hearts. And so, Lord, I pray for him as uh, the one who is sharing the message. But, Lord, I pray for each one of us that we may be recipients of this message, that we may take these words and allow it to transform our lives and let it be all for your glory. It's in your son's name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mike. Well, thank you, Doug. Let me get myself wired back up here right quick. See if I can get this to work. All right. You know, the thing about being the uh, retired preacher is it kind of reminds me of an uh, old fella that uh, he had retired also, and but he'd been filling in a little bit, preaching and everything. Well, he went somewhere, and they uh, decided, oh, you know, uh, uh, a couple asked him to go eat lunch with them afterwards, so. Uh, he was talking to one of the kids, and so he's talking to the kids, and he said, hey, what are we having for lunch today? And the guy in the little boy said, well, we're having goat today. And he said, goat? He said, yeah. He said, mama said, we might as well have the old goat over for lunch today. <laughs> so that's kind of how I fit in with some of this here. Huh? Good, good to be back with you. Um, we're going to be looking at, uh, in the book of Colossians, I, I've, I've been teaching Colossians back home, and so you kind of get to... Uh, hear a little bit of what we're doing. Let me get myself straightened up here with this microphone. All right. Uh, I, you know, y'all are unscriptural. You have church first and the Bible class second. And so I always have to, I forget. And, and I, I sit here and I get my sermons all ready and I get the class ready and I think, oh, I should have switched them. But that's all right. We're going to look at Colossians 3. And then in class, we're going to look over in, in Colossians 2 uh, at, at, at that time. I'd like for us, if we could, let's read the text here. Got my PowerPoint going. Hopefully we'll get it up and running here. And, and uh, I'll be reading from the ESV. I'm not sure if the PowerPoint is NIV or ESV. But let's read verses 1 through 4 then. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are of the earth. For you've died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him 
in glory. Now, what we're looking at, and really the whole book of, of Colossians is talking about the fact that, that Jesus is enough. And because we haven't been through a lot of uh, preliminary things and could have talked about some stuff uh, as a class, we'll talk about a few things. But uh, here in chapter 3, what's happening is, is Paul's about to now lay down some real practical applications for us. Uh, over in the earlier chapters, he's had uh, uh, he, he's nailing down what's happened in verses one and in chapters one and two. You see, chap- chapters one and two are what we call Christ is the the object of our faith, and then in chapters three and four, we see that Christ is the source of our faith, and. Um, I just see people out there that I hadn't seen in a long time. It's good to see all of y'all out there. In fact, I even I brought Patty with me this time, and she wasn't able to come last time. And I see my sister-in-law, Beth, from Kentucky, has me passing through. They're here, and my niece, uh, uh, Barbara, here. So glad y'all can make it. Uh, we, I'm, I can persecute all kinds of family people. To, uh, all right. All right. So we're looking at, all right, so here in chapters 3 and 4, Christ is going to be the source. And that's what we're going to look at in this section. And now I've got to ask you a question. Am I the only person here in this auditorium today that has to struggle with removing bad thoughts from my mind? Does anybody else here have that problem? I think we do. I think we all have to fight with this. And that's one reason why I think the Spirit inspired Paul to talk about some of these things here. Uh, the text tells us how we can do this. What can help us do this. Let's look at some things about this. We talk about, he gives us the reason for our change. where we can change our, our lives. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But he says, notice what he says there in 3 verse 1. He says, since you have been raised with Christ. Now, again, because we haven't spent some time uh, uh, earlier, I, I want to back up a little bit here. Obviously, since you've been raised with Christ, well, something must have happened earlier there. Well, you look back over in chapter 2 and look what it says there in chapter 2, verse 20. Since you died with Christ. Well, you died, and now chapter 3, you've been raised with Christ. Uh, back over in chapter 3, verse 3, look what it says. For you died. Uh, when someone dies, and some, uh, it's over. But something new has happened. You've died. There, back in chapter 2, look there in verse 16. It says, therefore. All right, therefore. Because something's been going along in those previous chapters. What was it? Since you've been raised with Christ, you died. Uh, therefore, what was it there? Well, look in 2 verses 12 and 13. Again, this is stuff we would have covered in other classes. But I want to talk about this for a minute. Here's the point he's pointing back to. He says, having been buried with him in baptism. There's that death right there. You died. You by, In which you were also raised with him through faith. Since you've been raised with him. There in 3.1. All right. Uh, in the powerful work of God who raised him from the dead. There it is. And you were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your, your flesh. You died. There you are. You, dead. you were dead in those things. God made you alive together with him, having forgiven us all of our trespasses. He's pointing back to something. A time there. He's saying, look, we all can point back to the time when we were baptized, when we were raised to walk that new life. In fact, Kind of sounds like Romans 6, doesn't it there? Oh, 3 and 4, don't you know that all of us who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? There it is, you died. There's his death. We were therefore buried with him through baptism unto death in order that just as Christ was, there it is again, raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. So you've got, he's pointing back to a time there. In other words, he's saying, look, Since this happened, at the time you gave your life to Jesus Christ, when you were baptized into him, let me tell you some things about how we can deal with our minds there. It's like you're saying, you know, look, since you were born into this family, this is how we're going to live. Or since you bought a house, there's things you're going to need to be working on. Or... Since you got married, this is how you need to live your life. Or since you graduated in high school, I remember 
uh, many, many, many years ago when I was getting ready to graduate, Dad caught me one day and said, now, Michael, he says, you're about to graduate. You need to remember something. You can either go to college and I'll help you out or you're gone. Say, so you're on your own as soon as high school's over with. So you just make the decision of what you want to do. So since, since I grad, what was the amen on there? There you go. <laughs> Since I graduated high school, I could either go to college or go get a job and move out. And I decided to go to college there. Uh, there's a point in time. Paul is pointing back to a point in time in our life when a great change happened. He says, okay, since you were raised with Christ, he tells us now, notice what he says. NIV says, set your heart on things above. Okay, since what? Since that point in time. We, we talk about that. Baptism is when it happened. When Jesus' blood washed us away, washed away our sins, when we were raised to walk that new life, since that happened, set your heart on things above. I want you to notice a couple of the other translations. I really think they've done a little better job here. Notice what the ESV says, seek the things that are above. Or New American Standard says, keep seeking things that are above. And I've been thinking about this a lot. You know, what the NIV says, set your heart on things above. And I don't know. Sometimes, I don't know how you are, but sometimes uh, we'll say, well, now, you know, somebody messes up. And they say, his heart was in the right place. We've done that, haven't we? Well, you know, his heart, her heart was in the right place. Well, this says you just keep seeking. Because sometimes, I'll tell you something. There are times in my life that my heart isn't in the right place. How about you? And yet, the text is saying, oh, make sure your heart's right. It doesn't say get, make sure your heart's in the right place. It says you just keep seeking right things. And I think that makes a difference in how we view things because sometimes my attitude isn't always right. Sometimes my heart isn't where it needs to be, but I still Keep seeking things above. Keep seeking right things. Uh, Paul says you keep doing that. If you've been raised with Christ, you keep seeking those right things where Jesus is seated. Look for those things. Keep seeking. It's not something that, well, I'll get my heart right and everything will be all right. No. If life is like, if your life is like mine, sometimes it isn't, the heart isn't always there, but we're going to still do the right thing. We're going to seek those things above. He says, set your, and then, then he says right after that, keep seeking things above. Then he says, set your mind on things above. Now that sounds real good. Set your mind on things above, but sometimes I don't know how you are. But I have a hard time getting some of those thoughts out of my mind that shouldn't be there. I mean, it could be any number of things. You, you can probably fill in the blank. Uh, we had a real rancorous election here recently. Maybe your politics is just in your mind. You're just, that's all you keep thinking about. Uh, maybe you got a boss out there and his attitude is terrible and it's just all you think about is how bad your boss is. It may be lust or pornography or something. Or maybe, maybe it's, a, it's a constant fear of what's going to happen in our nation. And I hear lots of people fearful and saying things like that. And it's always in their mind. All right, y'all see my little pet up here, huh? This, this is not my pet, but this is, I want you to look at, I want you to look at this, this monkey here for a second. This really is a monkey. First time I thought it, I wasn't sure. Uh, this is, well, well, look at him there. He's, he's got the whiskers. Now look at those eyes. Orange, uh, looks like Halloween contacts or something there. And uh, he's got that gray hair. I don't know whether he's old or whether he just normally looks that way. But th this is one ugly monkey right here. Uh, I've seen monkeys before. This one, this one is an ugly one there. Now, all right, let's take that PowerPoint away. Let's just go to the blank screen. Now, I want y'all to forget about that monkey. Put it out of your mind now. Don't even think about those orange eyes anymore. Don't think about those little whiskers and how ugly. Well, just don't think about that monkey anymore. Okay? All right, everybody forgot that monkey now? Yeah, yeah, you can't. I mean, what happens there? You see, uh, we can't because we, we keep saying, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to think about this. Paul says, look, he says, look, 
We have been raised with Christ. Heaven born people can't get satisfaction out of earth born remedies. And I find that many times we're trying to come up with earth born remedies to get things out of our mind. We try to get rid of sin, and it doesn't work. In fact, Again, the same book, Colossians, back in chapter 2. Notice what he says there in 21 and 23. He says, do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. That's what some were trying to do. He says, but notice what it says about all those rules there. Don't handle, don't taste, don't touch. But they are of no value, no value in stopping the indulgence of the flesh. How many times have you said, I am not going to do this ever again? And how long did that last? Somebody always, they they push your button, you decide, boy, they they will not bother me again. And the next time they push your button, what happens? It happens again. I am not going to think those terrible thoughts again. No more. How long does that last? About that long. Not much. Doesn't last very long at all, does it? And so we keep saying, I will not do this. I will not do that. Do not taste. Do not touch. Do not handle. It's of no value. Now, are there things we need to kind of work on? Yes. But that's the point. The point is, these, these, setting down these rules is, isn't going to work. Something's got to change here. If you are, he says, we need to look at something deeper. We need to look where Christ is seated. Christ is the answer. He's the one we focus on. If you're a for real Christian, you're involved in this Vital union with Jesus Christ. I think all of us here are pretty mature in your faith. And and we realize something that that Christianity is not just uh, an association with a nice religious organization. That's not Christianity. This right here, here at Taylor Street, is a meeting place of people who are deeply rooted in Jesus. Set your mind on things above where Christ is seated. Look what Paul said over in 2 Corinthians. Chapter 5, he says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, hey, you're in this building, we can be in Christ. We're in Him. If anyone is in Christ, what? He is a new creation the old has gone the new has come first corinthians 6 but he who unites himself notice says in verse 17 he who unites himself with the lord is one with him in spirit and then we go back and read our verse colossians 3 1 what we started with since then you have been Raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above or keep seeking things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. I got to throw one other verse in. Let's, let's look at Ephesians, what he says there. But because of his great love for us, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you've been saved. And we know this verse, but look at the next verse. And God raised us up. What's that, chapter 3? If you've been raised with Christ, God raised us up with Christ and seated us. Look at this. And he seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Get this. Somehow we are seated with Christ right now. We're in Christ We're there with him. I don't always understand this. But Christ is our head. Where is he? He's in heaven. And somehow we are translated. Not only are we right here, but we're with Christ who is with God. Set your heart. Keep seeking. I got to look into that word a little more there. We said set, uh, keep seeking things are above. It, it, it's, it's, it's literally all of you keep seeking this. This is what we need to do as a church. 
We're tired of what all we hear about on news and everything else. We're going to seek things that are above. In other words, the, the old ways, it's, it's kind of like a, a persevering effort. In other words, we don't just decide, okay, I'm going to seek things above, and from now on it's that way. Uh, it's, a, it's a continual thing that goes on. It didn't just, when we were baptized, our old ways just didn't disappear. That would have been nice, wouldn't it? But it just doesn't work that way. We continually seek things that are above above there may be things in our lives that we just constantly have to battle it may be for some for the crave for alcohol it's just it's a constant battle there where you're afraid that i may fall back into this again i don't want to do that it might be foul language maybe you use it all your life and now you're with christ you've been seated with him and you find yourself you you've got to really fight this this saying things you shouldn't ought to say or or maybe this is a Always focusing on politics instead of focusing on Jesus. Or sometimes we try to tie the two together and that doesn't work very well, does it there? Or maybe porn or any number of things there. You know, those things didn't just disappear one day. And all of a sudden we didn't have a problem with that. We keep seeking, keep on seeking things that are above where Christ is seated. Look at this text and look at what we've been, these, all these words from Paul how vitally connected we are with Jesus. It's not something that we have to put a string around our finger and go, oh yeah, I'm a Christian. Oh, oh yeah, I'm a Christian. Oh, I forgot, I'm a Christian. That's not how it is. That's who we are. We are Christ. It says, later on in the text, it says, Christ who is our life. Otherwise, if, we, if Christ isn't our life, everything we do, we're just going through churchanity instead of Christianity. And there's a big difference there. Well, I could go off on that. I won't do that. Let's talk about some other things. All right. Later on in the same verse, he says, set your mind. First of all, it says, keep seeking things above. Then he says, set your mind on things above. Well, let's just ask the question, exactly what, what are things that are above? Is he talking about heaven? Thinking about heaven all the time, the streets of gold? Well, I wonder what kind of pearls he's got in the pearly gates. Is, is that what he's talking about there? You know, we talk about heaven there. It reminds me of the story of the, uh, the preacher and the Uber driver both died at the same time and they got up to the pearly gates right at the same time met St. Peter there and Peter says to the Uber driver he says hey come on with me and, and he takes him out and he did what he, he told and he, I, I mean, there's this huge mansion and it is beautiful and it has everything there it's got a big banquet table it has the best sound system you ever heard your you ever heard in your life and you've got this olympic science pool it is everything he ever wanted and then he comes back over and say, says to the preacher okay all right you, you come on with me and he takes him over to this beat up old shack and uh all you got is just a little bunk bed and, and a and a still a tube tv with only three channels and you have to get up and turn it, no remote or anything. And that's all he's got. And, and the preacher says, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I think there's a mistake, Peter. He says, I, you know, I was a preacher. I mean, I was at church. I was up at a church building every day, and I preached God's word. Uh, and Peter said, well, yeah, that's true. He said, but you need to remember something. He said, when you preached, people slept. When this Uber driver drove, people prayed. <laughs> I had to throw that in there. All right, so back. So what are the things above? What are we thinking about? We talk about where Christ is seated. We talk about, is it heaven? I think Paul talks about it. Here he gives us a little later in this chapter. We won't get all the way down there. A little side note, I did talk about this one time on my Facebook page. I got a little, you want to go to that? I spent some time on this passage here. Notice what he says. Therefore, as God's chosen people, here are the things above. Holy and dearly loved, Clothe yourself, put on compassion and kindness, humility. What are things above? Gentleness and patience. Bear with one another and forgive. 
whatever, whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. What are things above? And, and over all these other virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. I've got to ask you a question. Do you think, just maybe, do you think with all the vitriol that, that's constantly being spewed out from anywhere from news media to social media, that maybe, just maybe, we need to start practicing compassion? Does the world need to see kindness? Humility seems to be in short supply lately. Everybody's got the right answers. Obviously, if you see it my way, you're doing well. Uh, do you think that maybe forgiveness needs to be practiced? Ah, uh, preacher, you don't, Michael, you don't, you don't know what they did to me and my family. Well, no, I don't. But it says, as the Lord forgave you, just what you did to the Lord and he still forgave you. Do you think maybe we need to start practicing those things? In other places, Paul writes things like over in Romans 12, he says, overcome evil with good. What are things above? Look what he says in Romans 13. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make, make no provision for the flesh. Or in Galatians where he says, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the, the desires of the flesh. Most of all, one that I just, I think we all know in, in Philippians chapter 4. Finally, brothers, here's some things that are above. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, Set your mind, think about such things. For whatever you've heard or received from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And look at the last part there. And the God of peace will be with you. Notice that last sentence there. And the God of peace will be with you. And, and we go back to Colossians, that same chapter, and look what he says there in 315. We put this all together. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which you were called. Are you coming across a lot of people who aren't at peace in their life right now? Is there a lot of things going on? Maybe we need to start paying attention to what Paul says. There's a lot of people claiming Christianity who are not at peace. And the question is, why? Paul says, think about such things. Paul says, set your mind on these things. Keep seeking these things, such as kindness, humility, compassion, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely. You keep seeking after these things. This it's where we want to send, uh, uh, set our minds. And it's amazing how God's word can open our eyes to what we need to do. And a lot of times, and I've been guilty of this, a lot of times we can, and we're good church going folks, and we're good people. I mean, everybody here loves the Lord, wants to do right. Sometimes we get to focusing on all these activities that we need to be doing. And not that they're bad activities, but instead of focusing on these very things that we're talking about. And I believe this world needs to hear and needs to hear it from us, compassion and humility and kindness and see it practiced in our lives. Notice what Paul says. Let's go down to verse three there in our text. For you have died. And notice what he says there. Your life is hidden with Christ in God. He's saying we are, we are bundled up 
with Christ, hidden with Christ in God. What does that mean to you? He, he says that, you know, you're, 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 you, you died. You have died. Your old life, when, when somebody dies, your old life, it's over with. You died to the world. You died to sin. It's done. It's forgiven. But now you're bundled up. Let me ask you something. How do you protect a baby from the elements? I mean, you wrap them up. You hold them in your arms. And you see to it that they're hidden with you. They are bundled up with you, in you. Now, how do we keep the effects of the world away from us? Because let's face it, we're going to walk out of here today. And this week, we're going to run into the world. And it's going to have an effect on us. How are we going to keep it from affecting us the same way? We've got to be hidden with Christ. What does it mean to be hidden? Well, we're hidden from sin. We're hidden from the effects of the... We're, we're hidden from Satan as the accuser. And he's saying, look, I know what you did. God, this is what he did. This is what she did. And God has us bundled up, hidden with Christ and God. And Satan can, he can point all his fingers and it just bounces off. Because we are bundled up with Christ in God. We're protected there. Now we've been looking at that picture of the, the dad with the baby. I've got to ask you a question. How many of you have been thinking about that monkey? Well, I haven't been. Why? Why? Because we've been setting our minds on things above. Some of you may have been setting your mind on a lot of things, but they aren't things above. And maybe you're letting that ugly monkey rule your thoughts and rule your life and maybe even rule what's going on in your family because you can't get it out of your mind. Notice what he says there in verse 4. And Christ, who is your Life. You know, since we died, isn't that right? Since you died, who's our life? Okay, I know we're just sitting here. This is church. You can talk. Who, if you died, who's your life now? Christ. Christ. Christ is your life. Uh, Jesus is not part of your life. Jesus is your life. And we need to get, get past this notion that, that, uh, that I'm, I'm here and, and, and Jesus is over there and every once in a while I'll try to talk to him because he's over there. And when I talk to God, he's kind of up there. No, he's our life. We're bundled up with him. We're in him. And, and sometimes people have this. I've even had Christians tell me this. Well, now look here. I have my church life over here and I have my business life over here. One guy said, I wear my church hat here and I wear my business hat here. No, no. Christ is our life no matter where you're sitting here or whether you're at business or whatever's going on. Christ is your life. Everything we do or think must reflect Jesus because he is our life. Why? Because we died. We were raised up. Since that, here's how we're going to live. Does that sound like somebody who just shows up to church just because that's what you're supposed to do? No. Oh, now we're at church. We, need, we want to be here. And that's right. But there's, it's much more than just something I'm supposed to do. Jesus is our life. And when he's our life, we begin to focus more upon his ways and his desires and how he would have us act. And then we find ourselves focused less and less on those ugly monkeys that we come in contact with. Those things that get in our mind. And we have a hard time shaking them. We focus on Jesus who is our life. Maybe some of you today need to refocus you have to go back and put some spiritual glasses back on and start seeing 
Christ is our life. I don't know what your needs may be. We're fixing to sing a song here in a second. We can, talk, you can come, we can talk about it, or maybe you can catch one of the elders around right here, and even during the song, walk up to them and say, I need some, would you pray about this for me? And I, you know what? They'll pray for you right now. Even you can pray in the pews there. It's all right. Whatever we can do for Christ to be your life, we want to help you. If we can help you, please come while we stand and we sing this song. Still, so many that's uh, having uh, challenges and uh, all, all sorts of health issues, not only COVID, but other things as well. 
And at this time, I'd like, of course, to pray for these people and lift them up to the great physician, the healer, God. Shall we pray together? Father, we're so grateful that we can come to you with our petitions. And this morning, Father, we ask a special prayer for Russell Williams and pray that you would uh, help him to be healed, be with Emily as she cares for him. And Father, for all, all that's uh, suffering with this disease, we pray for a special measure of, of patience. And uh, this is such a challenge to us, Father, and uh, one of the toughest health issues that we faced in a long time. But we know that with your help, we can overcome. And Father, for the lesson this morning, we thank you so much. And it is so pertinent to us today to uh, pay a lot of attention to what we focus on. And, and we thank you for Michael's message and his challenge for us to think on things that are above. And Father, we just pray that you help each of us do that. Take on that challenge and make that a part of our lives. And when we fail with this or other things in our life, and uh, we just ask for your forgiveness and that you will help us to <clears throat> be stronger as we go forward. And Father, we thank you so much for the blessings you give us each day. You give us so much to sustain our lives, enjoy our lives, and uh, uh, we We've been placed in a stewardship position with these blessings, and we may pray that we may be good stewards of, of the blessings. And Father, we thank you for the Taylor Street family and that uh, there's so many people that use their talents and abilities for your glory. And Father, most of all, we thank you for a loving, caring Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and we pray in his name. Amen. Your only son no sin to hide, but you have sent him from your side to walk upon this guilty son and to become the
Good morning. I'll be reading from Isaiah 1, verse 18. Come now, let us settle matters, says the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are as red as crimson, they shall be like wool. As we take communion this morning, let's remember that Jesus Christ suffered, bled, and died for our sins. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we want to thank you for your son Jesus Christ for offering up his body on the cross for our sins. Please bless this unleavened bread that symbolizes his body. In your son's name, amen. Father God in heaven, we want to thank you for your Son Jesus Christ who shed his blood on the cross for our sins, to wash our sins away. Please bless this fruit of the vine which symbolizes his blood. In your Son's name, amen. Say our prayer for the offering now. Father, thank you for all the material blessings you've blessed us with. Please bless us as we give back some of what you've given us. In your son's name, amen. Would you please be standing as we sing our final song, after which we'll be dismissed. Yeah. 